All right, friends and neighbors, it is that time of year, summertime in Wellesley. It's a great opportunity for you to get out on your bicycles, maybe go for a trail run, maybe a little 5K, 10K, whatever you like. Now's the opportunity for you to seize the moment and get active outside. I'm very excited as an ultra runner and triathlete myself to really take advantage of some of the trails right around in the Wellesley area. It's going to be a fantastic time of year to do that, but we want to make sure that you know what you're doing, so we're going to give you the education. We're going to teach you how you can, how you can stay safe on the trails, some proper footwear and some proper running techniques to get you from point A to point B fast and safe. So first things first, when you talk about running and you talk about running trails, you want to be safe. And a lot of that has to do with the type of footwear that you, that you sport. Uh, not all shoes are really good for, for trail running, as some of them uh, don't exactly have grip. Other ones may be too narrow at the toe box. Other might have too big a drop for what you're trying to do. So it's important that you get down to your local running store and figure out what the right shoe is for you. At Tri Jake Fitness, we endorse ultra running shoes. Uh, I'm wearing a pair of ultras right now. They are the Lone Peak 1.5. You can get more information at my website at tryjake.com if you're interested in those types of shoes. I like them because they offer a zero drop as well as uh, a widened toe box. Now, while that may not mean a whole lot to you, let's talk a little bit about what that exactly means. These trail running shoes are designed for the long haul. The widened toe box allows your toes to sprawl out in a natural sort of formation. That's important because you need your toes for a good toe off. See, a big myth in the running community is that the way that you get faster is by lengthening your stride. And the way that you lengthen your stride is by a forward reach. That's not exactly true. You don't reach further in front of you to run faster. You actually have a higher kickback on your backstroke of your run gait. Look at any of the best runners in the world and you will see exactly what I'm talking about. It's not so much the idea that you are stepping further out here as much as it's the idea that you're kicking higher back here. And that's really important really when you think about it. So if you have a wide toe box which allows your toes to sprawl out in a natural running formation, when you land, you're not thinking about landing. You're only thinking about your next stride. And that's very, very important. So that's one of the reasons why we endorse ultra running shoes at tri -Jake Fitness, because they're the only company, only shoe, that offers that sort of technology in, in the shoe that they manufacture. Now, that being said, let's talk a little bit about zero drop. Talk a little bit about zero drop. We're going to talk a little bit about barefoot running. Now, Zero drop in your shoe basically means every time you have a, uh, a, sh a shoe, there is a degree of drop. Now this is, excuse me just one moment, this is the drop between the heel and the toe. As you can see with these shoes, there is zero drop between the heel and the toe. Now why is that important? That's important because this allows for a solid midfoot strike keeping your heel relatively off the ground and allowing your Achilles heel to flex in a natural state and utilize your calf muscle as the primary mover in propelling you forward. That can only be found in a zero drop shoe. Most other shoes have a drop frame of 5 to 10 millimeters, meaning from the heel to the toe there's about that much difference in that drop. Now that's fine. Most other shoes have between 5 to 10 millimeters between heel to toe. Now, if you've been running in these styles of shoes and you've been very successful, please keep running in those shoes. But a zero drop shoe might offer you a little bit of advantage that is going to offer a much more natural form for your foot to fall. Now there's lots of different shoes out there and there's lots of different races out there. And everything is for everyone. Don't think for a minute that you are excluded from anything. If there's one thing I know about the running community, it's that it's inclusive, not exclusive. And running will oftentimes meet you where you are. So take advantage of the trails here, uh, here and around town. They're not that hard to find. Just get on one. Run for five minutes, turn around, come back the direction you came from. That way you don't get lost like I sometimes often do. 
Running is a fantastic outdoor activity, and tis the season for outdoor activity. It's relatively cheap in that you don't need any equipment except maybe a pair of shoes, some shorts, and maybe a tank top. It's great sun exposure for that vitamin D supplement, and it's a wonderful feeling that when you come back from a run, you've done something and you've accomplished something. You know, And there are no age limitations. Remember this, my friends. It's important to always move forward. Don't buy into the fact that you're too old or too achy to run. A wiser man than myself once said, that people don't stop running because they get old. They get old because they stop running.